This is the Least Play Gaming Show. Coming up, we'll be checking out all the latest games like Dynasty Warrior Origins, seeing what Sega is doing with Crazy Taxi, the remaster mania that won't seem to stop, seeing if Silent Hill 2 is any good, the Resident Evil star taking his clothes off, how to unlock free loot in The Sims 4, a new games console that plays N64 cartridges, and so much more. Get comfy with me, Leloy Chang. It's episode one of the Least Play Gaming Show. In the final years of the Han Dynasty, famine and corruption had terrorized people all over ancient China. In Dynasty Warriors Origins, you are going to put a stop to all of that. Set in 183 AD, this will be the origin story that leads to the Three Kingdoms time period that this franchise is well known for. Game developer Koei Tecmo is hoping that this game will introduce the hack and slash franchise to a new generation. Dynasty Warriors has been around since 1997, and while popular in Japan, was never a hit in the West. We're huge fans of the franchise, having played Dynasty Warriors 4 Extreme Legends back in the day, which had a fantastic co-op mode. The last entry was in 2018 with Warriors 9, which had a DLC come out four years later. That game featured an open world compared to linear battle levels of the older entries, and sales were weaker with Koei putting the franchise on ice. There was a film adaptation from Hong Kong in 2021, and that went about as well as you can imagine. So what do we know about the new game? Koei is keeping their lips sealed, but they did say it will take place from the perspective of one protagonist, compared to the larger roster of heroes the older games had with character select. The lead character is nameless and suffering from amnesia, and during the epic quest hopes to recover his memories. It's also ditched the open world and reverted back to the traditional map. While you play as one character, you will be given the opportunity to pick a companion for each battle, and they will have their own unique strengths, so choose wisely. Chronologically, the ending of this game may lead into Dynasty Warriors 4, as that entry took place in the beginning of the fall of the Han Dynasty and involved the Yellow Turban Rebellion, which is also confirmed to be in this game. Koei has said it will feature the largest battle scene in the franchise, with its 1v1000 battles. Strategy has never been more important in the newest entry. Before you head into battle, war councils are held where characters will discuss what's needed to win the battle. The playing maps are very large and the characters will recommend geography over which route to take that will give you the upper hand. While the battle gameplay is extremely fast paced and aggressive, you are not just mindlessly killing hordes of enemies. You need to be strategic and move around the map to destroy supply chains and more to actually make progress in the battle. Chinese mythology has become popular thanks to the sleeper hit Black Myth Wukong, and I'm sure Koei is hoping to cash in on that. The game is scheduled to come out January 2025 on most platforms. Come on over, have some fun with Crazy Taxi! Yeah, so make the music stand back! Here's a little bit about me. At Lee's Play, Sega's Crazy Taxi is one of my all-time favourites I had growing up on the PlayStation 2, and it still can be played today on Xbox. But the original game launched on the Dreamcast, which just turned 25 years old this year. This was Sega's last home console before exiting the market and just becoming a video games publisher, and today is most well known for its Sonic and Yakuza games. The Dreamcast continues to resonate in the hearts of many gamers who want a revival of the console in mini form like the NES and PlayStation, and game controllers are even still being made for it. But Sega appears to be done with the Dreamcast for the time being and want to keep the past in the past. So what's next for Sega? Like the fusion, just With Sonic, Sega is relying on IP and is now diversifying their lineup by going into their back catalogue to bring out new versions of Jet Set Radio, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, and yes, an all new Crazy Taxi. 
Another big fan of Crazy Taxi is apparently the United States Democratic nominee, Vice President Tim Walz, who once owned a Dreamcast with a copy of Crazy Taxi. Naturally, the internet did exactly what you imagined the internet would do and put Tim into the game. Tim, there'll be time to sleep when you're dead. Is it weird? Hey, Absolutely. This is great. Take me to the church. I'll tell you what. Creator Edward La Barbera has modded the crazy taxi game and now you can gallivant around the city picking up customers as the new potential VP. And yes, you guessed it, that modding extends to his running partner and Democratic nominee for president, Miss Kamala Harris. Kamala. <laughs> How to make gumbo. Thanks. The enthusiasm for Crazy Taxi remains strong. There's replicas of it at the Sega offices, and some fans have even pimped out their rides to look like the cars from the game. But this is the old game, and what are we to expect in the new one? Footage of a beta build has leaked onto the internet, and from what we know, it will be made in Unreal Engine and have an online multiplayer component. We can also see that Sega is being very liberal with the term taxi, as new vehicles include race cars and wagons. If you're not familiar, Crazy Taxi plays very, very differently to Gran Turismo and Forza, so our advice is to load up Crazy Taxi on your old Dreamcast or new Xbox Series X or S and start learning the ropes of picking up customers at breakneck speed. Do watch out for the trams, though. Welcome to the town of Silent Hill, where dreams come to die and the spare roams free, and so do some monsters with traffic cones for heads. You play as a grieving widower, James, who receives a letter from his dead wife, Mary, who claims to be in the town looking to reunite. This is a remake of a PlayStation 2 game from 24 years ago and the Bloober team have done an excellent job of bringing it up to date on newer hardware. This is an Unreal Engine 5 game and it just about ran at minimum settings on my aging gaming desktop with a 3GB GTX 1060. I've played Bloober team's previous game, The Medium, and while that was technically an excellent game, I had real issues with certain storylines. This time around, as a remake which adapts the story very faithfully and fleshes out certain plots and characters, the European game studio have finally hit their stride in a game that's practically flawless. You didn't love Mary anyway! What? Hey, wait! How do you know her name? The real standout is the acting and motion capture, in particular James played by British actor Luke Roberts. Yours truly does find the character design incredibly handsome, and maybe I'll whisk him away to somewhere far more romantic, far away from dreary Silent Hill. Aren't you Maria? I'm not your man. You can't just kill someone because the way they looked at you. Silent Hill 2 is a very sad, miserable game, and the game developers would consider that a great compliment. While the game does have multiple endings, depending on how you play, I didn't feel the immediate need to jump back into that world and unlock the next one. That said, this could very well be a game that holds long-term value in your collection to be taken out every couple of Halloweens. Silent Hill 2 is also a very expensive game at 70 euros, so if you have played the original version 20 years ago, there's definitely no harm in waiting for this version to go on sale. But if you're younger and this game is completely new to you, you'll be very, very happy to be spooked and haunted around the town of Silent Hill with about 20 hours of gameplay. If you don't have the cash on hand to shell out for this month's newest release of Silent Hill 2, why don't you check out what the competition has over at Capcom? The modern Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes are both available on Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Plus in all regions around the world that have the service. Resident Evil 2 and 3 take place in the story of Resident Evil during the same time period in the same location and are surprisingly very complementary to each other. While Resident Evil 2 offers you the perspective to escape the Umbrella virus outbreak from both Claire Redfield and Leon Kennedy's perspective, Resident Evil 3 offers an additional point of view from star agent Jill Valentine. 
Resident Evil 2 is considered a better game, but if you're tight on time as you are cash, the shorter runtime of Resident Evil 3 allows you to complete the game in one weekend or even one sitting if you set aside enough hours to be stalked and spooked. Oh, if it isn't Chris Redfield, nicknamed Daddy Chris. Women want to date him and most guys would go gay for him. Capcom has put him in a leather harness, an off-the-shoulder kimono, but fans want more. So much so that this unofficial statue of Chris Redfield is now for order in nothing more than his jocks. And it brings me great joy to mention that if you prefer, you can also order a variant of him that is more, how should I put it, excited to see you? In the world of celebrity and fandom, video game fans just can't wait to see their favourites take their kit off. Lara Croft was patient zero in the 90s, but today any character is up for grabs, with Chun-Li, Tracer and even Mario in their birthday suit in all sorts of compromising positions. But how do the video game developers feel about it? While well, Eidos Interactive worked hard in the 90s to sue those who made the Tomb Raider treasure hunt nude, but completely failed. Nowadays, the current IP owner Crystal Dynamics simply turns a blind eye to the heroine who has been modded into more bikinis than a Victoria's Secret model. Square Enix is finally bringing their newest Final Fantasy games to the PC platform and the Final Fantasy makers are begging the modders to not remove the clothes off their favourite heroes. Producer Naoki Yoshida has begged the fan community not to put Clive and his crew in the nude. As for Chris Redfield, as soon as I get my new gaming PC, I can't lie, but I may have to replay Resident Evil Village where everyone is running amok in nothing more than their underwear. Ethan Winters can relax though. According to Capcom, they feel he has a face only a mother can love. While it seems the marketplace is flooded with racing games left, right and centre, this one makes all the others look like toys. Assetto Corsa Eva would probably be insulted I even looped it in that category, because it actually is a racing sim. This game started out nearly 20 years ago by one developer and has become one of the top games amongst the hardcore of racing sim players. For starters, VR and triple monitor support is built in from the get-go, which should give you an idea of who their target audience is. It's not using a game engine off the shelf like Unreal, instead opting for its own in-house programming, and should have cars from Alfa Romeo, Porsche, Mercedes-Benz and more. What isn't confirmed yet is if the game will have modding capabilities. Believe it or not, amongst racing sim fans, the modding capabilities of the previous entry is what has made the game a fan favourite, with players able to add in any car or racetrack. A website called Assetto World, which hosts user-generated content, claims to have over 9,000 cars and 1,000 racetracks that gamers can put into their simulation. It should come as no surprise that at least play, I'm not the biggest racer. I only got my own driving license two years ago for an automatic transmission, and I think my one litre city car is zippy, but I continue to be so impressed with the latest innovations in racing sims and giving the biggest enthusiasts the feeling of what it feels like to be on the racetrack, with absolutely no physical danger of real car racing. The Sims 4 has just turned 10 years old and has changed a lot. For starters, it's now free to play on, so keep watching as you may find this guide useful. They have introduced reward unlockables as a way to encourage players to explore new ways to play the game and with the upcoming Life and Debt expansion pack, there is a limited time event. If you're in a rush and want to claim these items quickly, watch closely. Start a new game and create a Sim. Move them into a house and go crazy with the money cheat mother load. As you begin playing, this will give you a list of tasks to complete to gain points and unlock those items. We're going to get started by going to the Willow Creek Library and chatting with three Sims and ask them about Ambrosia. 
Use the same computer in the library to research it. Order flower seeds on the computer. Then go back home and plant a snapdragon and lily. Purchase gardening books on the computer and read them to increase your gardening skill to level 2. To research a plant, click on a crop and press research. When you see the mailman, check your mail. Go to your inventory and read the newsletter. Tasks will now start becoming more difficult and time consuming. Fortunately, cheats can help. Open the cheat box and enter testing cheats on. Enter this long cooking cheat you can find on Google and the cooking skill will be maxed. Then go make yourself a roast chicken. Finally, open Reaper's Rewards and claim everything so far. Buy your sim the gramophone stereo. As your sims dance to music, a cool evil mist emerges from it. Click on the gramophone to summon the Grim Reaper, and the man himself should pay you a visit. Start chatting with Grim and get to know him casually. No mention of debt, he's off the clock. Keep socializing to become friends with Grim. Then open the cheat box again and enter this gardening cheat. Hold shift on your keyboard and click on a plant and set the gardening state to mature. Then take a cutting sample. Check your mailbox again and read the newsletter. Then go cook a high level meal. Complete an aspiration goal. If you use the money cheat, change your aspiration to wealth for an instant unlock. Order some fruit packets off your computer and plant apples and cherries anywhere outside. Fertilize the fruits using anything you have spare. Open the cheat box again and use the fishing cheat. Then find a fishing spot to catch three fish. Open Reaper's Rewards and claim your earnings. And in Build Buy, add the Scare Seeker Challenge to your house. Search for the Green Lady's Lost Tome and buy it. Have your sim read the intro. Have your sim cook a high level meal. Then have your sim cook a gourmet meal. Click on the plant and have your sim research grafting. Get the mailman to deliver the post again and read the third newsletter. Go fish with any bait available, then let's leave the house and go to the Willow Creek nightclub. And finally, find the fishing spot and angle for a big catch. All going well, you will have just unlocked three weeks of items, including the Grimm's Cruiser Bicycle. Now your sims can cycle around the worlds without having to buy an expansion pack that comes with the bicycles. These unlockables won't be around forever, so go claim them now. This may all seem tedious, but our mantra is always that nothing beats free. Wasn't a dream. The classic RPG, gorgeous faraway lands with magical, mythical creatures, and foliage with a level of detail that would bring most computers to their knees. You battle against big monsters in the noble search of fashion? We were really transported to Miraland! Not quite. This is a rather more radical take on the RPG genre called Infinity Nikki. Promising to be the coziest game ever created, you spend your time collecting materials to create fashion and style outfits in your destiny to be a stylist. The game developers have identified that there hasn't really been an offering of a big game for players that want to relax without violence in the game. In this game, the only thing you'll be quick on the draw with is a camera for the ever iconic photo mode. In the past, these types of games would be called girly, with the association of them being considered second rate in terms of quality, but Infinity Nikki plans to change that. Your character hops more gracefully than Mario ever could and can travel around the huge open world in elegant gliders that give Link and Zelda major FOMO in Hyrule. The game just had a wide open beta test that early adopters went crazy over and the website just had 25 million global pre-registrations all wanting to try out the game. The style does go heavy on cottagecore and fantastical fashion, and at least play, I wonder if there is a missed opportunity to add bigger diversity of fashion styles more akin to the tremendous variety of Roblox has in Dress to Impress, which has taken the world by storm. That said, bizarrely enough, this game looks too big to fail. Ready! This segment of the video game genre has been dormant for quite a while, so the incredible visuals and promise of Infinity Nikki has left us rather speechless. All going well, Infinity Nikki will soon be joining the ranks of The Sims, Animal Crossing, and other video game staples in the genre. Now it's time for the monthly sales charts to see what gamers are playing across Europe. 
17.6 million games were sold in September on PC and games consoles. At number 10 is the new racer Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. At number 9 we have the crew Motorfest. At 8 the tables have finally turned as Zelda is the one this time rescuing Link in Echoes of Wisdom. At 7 Grand Theft Auto 5 continues to be a must buy for anyone picking up a video games console. At 6 American Basketball is surprisingly popular in Europe with NBA 2K25. Hogwarts Legacy coming in at number 5. At 4, Mario is in a sweat as the adorable Astro Bot continues to delight as the new marquee franchise for Sony. The brand new hack and slash Warhammer Space Marine 2 enters the charts at number 3. The Crew 2 has raced back into the charts at number 2 as gamers were given the opportunity to buy it for just a euro. And at the top spot, it's of course EA Sports FC 25. FIFA played chicken with EA and EA clearly won. With the Tokyo Game Show just a few weeks ago, I taught about all the excellent games that never leave Japan. Before the internet, region exclusives or Japanese only games were a big deal. But the world has gotten smaller. Digital games publishing allows anyone around the world to sell a computer game. Gone is the need to convince a Western publisher to localize your work. Now all the developers have to do is press publish. With the world at our fingertips, has import titles become a thing of the past? Believe it or not, they haven't. And I can bet you good money you never heard of these. Yokai Watch 4 came out five years ago and has never left the country. Our character wears a wristwatch that allows him to shift between three different time periods and summon Japanese folklore creatures called the Yokai. The Yokai actually make up your fighting party in the game's battles, but the monsters you don't control will have very unpredictable behavior based on their personality. While I can't imagine anyone out there needing yet another RPG game, Dragon Quest X is a great choice. This RPG game takes place in the world of Astoria, and in true RPG fashion, it is up to you to save that world from a demonic invasion. You will battle enemies and level up across five different locations, and if you get the DLC, even a cruise ship. If the name sounds familiar, that is because Dragon Quest is a franchise with games sold worldwide. Dragon Quest X is the exception. It used to be an online game, but Square Enix has now made it an offline game. Do know that this may mean that a Western release is possible, but in the meantime it just had a big DLC release last year and is available on import for both the PlayStation 5, Switch or if you have access to a Japanese Steam account. But how about something you can play with your friends? Arcade Love plus Penguo is a collection of quirky arcade games you can play alone or as a 4 player PvP. Bonus points if you have a 5th friend in the group that can use Google Translate and tell you and your mates what's going on. When you consider how eclectic the Nintendo eShop is and all the shovelware it has, it completely eludes us to why this game hasn't been made available for sale outside of Japan. If you're in the market for a new video games console, there's still value to that disk drive. The Switch, PS5 and Xbox Series X have no region lock. It will cost you. Dealers that specialise in import titles will add their markup and if you're in Europe, you'll also be liable for import tax too. Importing Japanese titles was always an expensive hobby and that hasn't changed. But these days we do have Google Translate on our smartphones and that should make things a little easier. For the gamers who just turned 30, or remember being in their 30s, you either had a Nintendo 64 or knew someone who did. Something I can do for you, old woman. You can still play the greatest hits with a Nintendo Switch subscription, and they will even sell you a modern controller replica that's bang on the money. However, there's still people that just want more, or who have an attic full of cartridges laying about. Hello. Check out the Analog 3D. This is a modern system that can play Nintendo 64 cartridges with all the essentials of today's technology. 
you can pair a wireless controller to it. 4K HDMI is standard and it's region unlocked to play every N64 game made from Silicon Valley to Tokyo. It has a custom designed operating system named 3D OS that will give older games modern sensibilities like being able to save anywhere with save states. That should prove rather useful for the time poor gamer who may be unfamiliar with older titles and or increased difficulty. The Nintendo 64 set the standard for many games in the genre, with the famous plumber hitting his full stride in Super Mario 64. Analog 3D has gone to all the effort because they feel it's the best multiplayer platform to ever exist, with around 70% of N64 games supporting multiplayer. But how can Analog manufacture this without being sued by Nintendo, who has been recently very trigger happy? It isn't software emulation, rather it has a built-in microprocessor called an FPGA that is an exact replica of the original processor instructions of the Nintendo 64. All the software and programming to play an N64 game are actually contained in the game cartridges themselves, which Analog isn't selling. This device just so happens to perfectly read the cartridges, which isn't copyright infringement. When you remove the nostalgia tinted glasses of the N64, a lot of older games like Golden Eye and Perfect Dark struggle with their frame rates, especially in multiplayer. With the extra power of today's technology, you should see massive frame rate improvements in those games, essentially giving the older cartridges a mini remaster. The system is available for pre-order, but it's going to cost you 250 US dollars and that doesn't include a controller. The white version has already sold out in just a few hours, but if you want a black model, place your orders quickly. At Lee's Play, I wouldn't be surprised if they eventually release a translucent batch of the systems to capitalise on Y2K nostalgia, just like I am with these music choices. If you're looking for a fuss-free way to play N64 games like Old Faithful, it's probably not going to get any better than the Analog 3D. Good night, Miss Dark. This has been a year full of remasters. Some were excellent, like Tomb Raider, which is my game of the year, and others like Until Dawn were unnecessary, overpriced, and smacked with reviews like lackluster and technically abysmal. Ukulele was a 2017 indie game from Playtronics that was fully financed on Kickstarter, and is a collectathon platformer in the vein of Banjo Kazooie. It hasn't even been 10 years, and here they are with the imaginatively titled remaster, Yuka Replaylee. Before you sigh at the thought of another re-release, there is more than meets the eye. The developers had admitted that a lot of them learnt on the job of the first game and that the team has grown a lot in experience since. The new version will get rid of the clunky controls, the characters will have proper drop shadows which means as you platform you can actually see where they're going to land, and they will add quality of life features like a map. The most exciting part of the trailer to many was actually the end title screen, which curiously just mentions it's going to Nintendo rather than the Switch specifically. It's further teased with a pair of animated eyeballs surrounding Nintendo. The internet has gone crazy with speculation that this is clearly being developed for the Switch successor, and all of a sudden Yuka Replaylee seems like a much more exciting game if it's going to be a launch title platformer for the Nintendo Switch 2. While it seems like a solid bet on behalf of Platonics, the market has never been more competitive. And what's this? Aronok Games is back in business and they are coming out with a remaster of Croc. Trailers for both games had just come out today a few hours apart and are targeting the same type of gamer. Croc is leaning heavily on nostalgia, it's been nearly 30 years since we saw our favourite crocodile. The original game developers have returned and are shepherding the remaster, and along with high definition graphics, have implemented a modern control scheme. Like Tomb Raider, you'll be able to toggle between the retro and modern graphics at any point and there's even an option to emulate CRT displays. You can completely customise the visuals of Croc, for example using old polygon models with modern graphics, vice versa, or playing using all the old assets with a new modern lighting scheme. 
Croc is scheduled to be released before the end of the year, and while Yuka is being coy with the Nintendo platform it will release on, Croc is definitely coming out for the Nintendo Switch you already have. If we spend our gaming money this Christmas on Croc, will there be an appetite to buy Yuka or Playlee? I'll be keeping a close eye on the sales charts and will let you know. One thing is for sure though, we are in a retro remaster mania and it's showing no signs of slowing down. And that's the show for this month. I hope you enjoyed watching. It was a lot of work, but I had a lot of fun putting this together. Subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode in November. I plan to do this monthly. I also want to introduce a letters to the editor section. So if you have any suggestions or comments on anything shown in the episode or video games in general, let me know down below. Keep safe, keep well, and keep on gaming.